Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And it is time for another daily dose of dismal Disney. Disney had their Q2 earning call this morning. Yes. And uh, yeah, it didn't go very well for them because right afterwards, the stock dropped off a cliff. Yeah, it was weird. Right up to the call, the stock was like 116 and had been going up. And then after the call, it just, it just dropped like... $11, $12, massive. Oh, yeah, $11.77. Oh, my God. Uh, yeah, so this explains why they probably did it in the morning. And look, uh, we listened to that call, and they basically said that Q3 is not going to be good. No, I think that's a lot to do with it. Q3 is not going to be good. So let's talk about this. You've been looking into a little bit more than I have, but uh, yeah, this is not good news, guys. I could totally see Disney stock going under 100 bucks again. It's uh, possible. You know, because they don't have anything. They don't have anything well, in the pipeline. They said if it drops below 13.2, so 13.3, um, it'll be the worst it's been in a year and a half. And I think currently it's the worst it's been in a year. Oh, my God. Okay. So let's talk about this before we get into it any further. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. You'll get a woohoo if you do. Woohoo! Uh, no woohoos at Disney this morning, I don't think. No, I don't think so. I mean, it started out kind of positive. Like, um, initially, it looked pretty good at first. They were talking about how, you know, stock was going up. Right. And they were talking about how Disney Plus gained 6.3 million subscribers. Right. And Hulu went up a little bit. And their ARPU, which is revenue per, revenue per I user, ARPU. I know, went ARPU. up 40 to 44 cents and all this other stuff. They said it was probably because of the charter communications you know, Spectrum deal mm. they did that just started to kick in last quarter um, and all that. So it looked like it was doing okay. ESPN Plus is still losing money, but it was only down 18 million as opposed to 660 million this time last year. Sounded good. Sounded good. At first. And then you start listening to what they were saying. Right. Um, yeah, so they basically, the, my takeaway from it was uh, they're going to prune back the content. They're... I, they're not looking at a very good Q3. They said that repeatedly. They said that repeatedly Q3 is going to suck. Oh, so, but Q4 is going to be fine, guys. Q4 is going to be fine. Q4 is going to be fine. But Q3 is not looking too good, guys. And they would know by now because we're, we're you know pretty far into to their Q3. So, right. Um, and I think they're looking at the bookings. And they, they even said about the, the parks, they said about the travel, they said, well, you know, we pretty much peaked at the, the post-pandemic travel. It's, it's, it's normalizing it's now. It's normalizing. Well, did yeah. you catch, too, that they had on their report, they had said that the parks, it looked like the parks were doing better. Um, they said that the parks experiences rose 10% to $8.4 billion for the quarter. Yeah. But operating costs increased. So it dropped it down to about $2.3 billion for the quarter. So they're raising prices, and that's the gist they kept saying. They're going to keep raising prices. Um, to offset the the increases in costs, which means more people aren't going to go. Yeah, I mean, I <laughs> I don't know, guys. I don't. I think it's going to be a lot worse than what they're letting on. But they keep trying they get, to. They kept reiterating. Q three is bad. It's going to be bad. Just so you know, it's going to be bad. But hey, we have some some wins here. Now, I guess uh, the streaming numbers were a little bit better than they thought they were going to be. And uh, you know, they, okay, and realize too that they've got this whole thing going on with Hulu. We don't know how much they have to pay for Hulu. Yeah. No, we don't know yet that yet. But also, too, like the, the numbers are up because they had that deal. And right. I mean, that's a happen for this quarter. I'm guaranteeing you that you're going to start seeing other places offer Disney Plus, Disney Plus Hulu or whatever for free for what their service as they make deals with Disney to drive subscriber numbers up. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I don't know, guys, because I'm, I'm looking at the I'm looking at the, the movie pipeline, too. And they were, he even said about Marvel, he was like, yeah, well, we're basically, we've got, what do you say, uh, vestigial remnants of, of phase, what, what we call, what we call phase four and five. Yeah. Like a freaking <laughs> appendix so. or a, or a, a vestigial tail. Like we've basically, got leftover crap from phase four and phase, phase five. I think that's, that's next year's slate. Is what he said, and then whatever crap. shows they put out, yeah. because I don't not think Captain America, Brave New World, no. or you know the Thunderbolts are going to do great. They no. only have Deadpool, and Wolverine this year for Marvel coming to the theaters. I think it's going to do really well, but I think it's going to be limited by the fact that it's rated R. Um, something else I was going to real quick mention: the reason they said that they think Q3 is going to be bad. Now Q3 for them started April first, so we're more than a month into it. They said due to various factors, including higher wages. 
blame it on the employees. Right. Uh, pre-opening costs related to Disney Cruise Lines, uh, Lookout K, and their new Disney Adventure and Disney Treasure ships. And they also said, they, did you catch? They said there's a one-time big payout coming, but they didn't say to what. Is that about, didn't they buy, I mean, I'm, I'm speculating here, but I thought they bought cruise ships off of another. That was cruise. a while ago. Oh. That was one of the ships that are it's coming out. One of out. the loans, maybe. I'm wondering. Because they they didn't, he didn't go out. into detail. And it was also funny to me that, like, when it came to things like Marvel and stuff, or, or, or streaming, they, we can't, we don't want to talk too much about those segments, or we don't want to give too much information about what we're going to do because our, 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 co- our competition. But then when they were asking a question about other things, they had no problem going into more detail. But what it, basically, I don't think it's about your competition. I think it's about you can't reveal too much or people will know you're full of shit. Yeah, that's exactly it. I think I think Disney is is absolutely positively full of shit. I think their their business model is basically buy time, quarter to quarter. I think we're pretty much in this. I mean, I think they they know they have to change, or they're gonna have another pelts situation on their hands. Which, speaking of, isn't it weird that the stock was like at one hundred and twenty some dollars before, like a couple of days before the proxy, the proxy battle, the vote, right, the, right. the annual shareholder meeting, and people were betting on change or pressure to make some changes to the company. As soon as it was announced that the board was going to stay before they even had the meeting, stock started to plummet. After they announced that the board was going to stay because the votes were in, stock plummeted more. And then it stayed about what? It's staying around the 113, 114 range, somewhere yeah, in there, yeah. 112, somewhere in that range. And then you get to the earnings call and then it's down to under 100 or 105 bucks, like 104 something. It just, the board was not going to, I don't know what you guys thought was going to happen. I. <sighs> They don't have a plan. Disney doesn't have a plan. Their oh, no, pla- their plan is remakes. Their plan, okay, so that was another thing that came up. Um, that came up uh, a couple of times, but Iger basically said that they're going to double down on sequels because they, effectively they know sequels are money in the bank. They, he said something about it already being- He said uh, it was easy to market. You didn't have the marketing easy to costs. Mine. He said it was oh, IP yeah. to mine. I might take a shot every time I mentioned mining IP, you know, you had a few shots by the end of the call because he just kept going on. Between the earnings, the, by the way, Q3 is going to be bad. Q3 is going to be bad. And we're mining IP. You would have been on, drunk off your ass. So, I mean, basically I think people are realizing like Disney doesn't have a plan. And now he did say about the, the successor and all this this jazz, all the stuff that people want him to say. But Didn't their work, their plan was to buy time to get pelts off of their backs, and now they have pelts off their backs, and people realize the emperor's not wearing any clothes, and we really want Palpatine to be wearing clothes. But mm-hmm. uh, yeah, they really want Iger to be wearing. Uh, clothes too. Yeah, yeah, right. So, but they realize that Disney is is they don't have a plan. I don't know what they're going to do. They're they're not doing much with animation other than sequels. The live action movies all look like crap, and I think they're vestigial remnants of, of stuff that was Yeah, it was funny before. how he worded that. It was, yeah, it was like... Like a tumor or something. Yeah, like, basically, yeah. we have the remnants of that, which is what's coming up in, in, you know, the films and streaming, you know, so that that'll probably won't do great. But after that... I, well, it'll be better because we're gonna we're gonna limit the two to three movies a year, and we're gonna we're gonna, we canceled some shows, and we're gonna you know spend less but make quality content. Well, if only you'd done that before. Well, the problem is they're chasing numbers on Disney Plus, and I think they're gonna get to a place where Netflix is at right now, where they just stop reporting numbers because investors expect that number to go up all the time, mm-hmm. and you uh, you you hit a ceiling. You you will hit a ceiling on the number of people that actually want to pay for Disney Plus. So at some point, you're going to have to be like, yeah, this is as good as it's going to get, guys. Now we're going to have to either um, make better content to retain people or we're going to have to start finding ways to upcharge people or something. And that's the problem when you're a, a publicly traded company like Disney and you've got investors is they think there's infinite growth potential. And I there know, isn't. but there there's isn't. no such thing as infinite oh, growth. But they potential. keep going because we have an unparalleled amount of brands that we can mine. It's like, yeah, but you know what? People are tired of your shit. That's just it. And something else was interesting. Besides the fact that it could hit the worst drop since November 9th, 2022, they said today they were the second worst performer in the SP 500 on the day behind Builder's first source. And that was that was before it dropped more. So I don't know if that's, you know, if they hit, they hit the worst. I don't know. That was when I wrote this, which at that point it was at $105 and something. 
So God, that's that's dire. It's not good. And the, the razzle dazzle. It was interesting because I was expecting announcements of some kind. Because when they were going to go early, like they went at eight thirty this morning our time, which is five thirty in the morning in California. Five thirty in the morning, these people had their asses up to do this to this meeting. Um, what was interesting is they usually do it after the close of uh, the bell, after mm-hmm. the close of the bell. They usually do it then. They chose to do it really early this morning. So either one of two things was going to happen. Either they had some big announcement they were going to make they thought was going to drive the stock up, or they were like, oh, shit, pull the bit, rip the Band-Aid off and just, you know, be done with it. And apparently yeah. it was the second. But I expected to be some kind of announcement, and there wasn't. It was just a rah-rah bullshit about, oh, look, our things are up. It was better than we thought. So most everything beat estimates, but Q3 sucks. Um, you know, vestigial whatever, vestigial remnants. Vestigial remnants And all that. Marvel. And, you know, yeah. hey, we got the cruise line's doing good, and the parks are doing great because we keep jacking the prices of people, and it's offsetting all our, our expenses because we're just going to keep squeezing people for every penny. And they didn't have any, they didn't have any big announcements or anything. It was just them talking in circles and then answering questions right from here's what the report said answer questions usually they have a middle section where they make announcements about things that are coming they're like they did bring up that oh we're we're so we're so excited about this year's movie slate because deadpool and wolverine i agree yeah um kingdom of the planet of the apes i will see uh inside out two and then they're talking about the end of the year and like moana two and mufasa that you already turn comments off because people hate it and that Elio, that no one really understands what it is. That's the only new movie they have, though. Mm-hmm. I, I was looking at all the upcoming animated movies, and I, I did an article on um, Pirates and Princesses, and, like, the only new IP they have in the next couple of years is Elio, and they pushed it back two or three times. They have, yes. And no mention of Snow White. N- no, they're not mentioning Snow White. And they no mention of Star Wars. Wars. Yeah. Like, they have the Acolyte coming out. You'd think they'd be pushing that at their meeting. Like, oh, we were excited because we have because they're talking about streaming. We have the Acolyte. We're all, you know, what, they didn't even mention it, guys. No, they know it's going to be a disaster. They know, I mean, look, if, if you can't pull numbers with a Boba Fett and an Obi-Wan versus Darth Vader show, nobody's going to watch the freaking Acolyte. No. Nobody cares. And they have a skeleton crew coming later this year. They didn't mention that. Nobody cares. They didn't mention the new movie they're supposed to be putting together with the, the Mandalorian film. And, all. you know, you think they'd be leading with that stuff. Nope. Nope. No mention of Star Wars, no mention of Snow White. What you heard about was, like, the movies that we've already knew, known about. Um, and, of course, he's super excited about all those. And I'm like, I'm super excited, too. I can't wait to see how they actually perform. Yeah. I, that'll uh, be interesting. I could use some some video fodder. Vestigial remnants of poor decisions. Because, remember, they got rid of the guy who was in charge of those live-action movies. Well, wouldn't technically Bob Iger be a vestigial remnant of poor decisions? Yeah. They brought him back. <laughs> so. uh, yeah, I, I just I think Disney at this point, um, I think they can course correct. I think it's going to take years. I don't think there, there, there is no like flipping the switch and 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 turning Disney back into what it was because it took them years to get to this this position. It took, you know, five, six, seven years. Yeah, the Iger was in charge. Grinding them then, down yeah. to, to nothing and to build Bad. it back up. It's going to take at least... If they decide, even if they had, just hypothetically speaking, and this this includes whether or not they got people on the board, you know, Perlmutter or whoever on the board. Even if they started today, like we're gonna change Disney starting today. We're gonna we're gonna do this different that by the time the decisions they make today actually make it to the public, whether it's uh, parks or movies or whatever, half a decade. Oh, it's going to take years. You know, so, there's, there's no turning it back on. I just want to show you guys this. So this is yesterday. Oh, my God. Okay. And then by 9.30 a.m., it just, it went from, you know, way up here, 116.47, down, 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 down to 107.12 at 9.30. And that was after the call. And then it just proceeded to drop, drop, drop. Yeah. I, I think it's going to keep dropping because they flat said Q3 is going to be bad. So... You know, it is what it is. You guys dug your own grave. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's you had it. You had a chance to course correct to bring some new people on the board. You fought it. You spent all your time fighting. And how much money? And how much money? But you never pelts. mentioned that. Is and, that one of the reasons you had some losses? Yeah, all all this time, all this money, all this effort fighting pelts off when you could have been, you know, writing the ship or trying to steer the ship away from the iceberg. And now it's like, it's too late. It's going to take, it, like I said, it would take them at least a half a decade to turn things around. So there we go, guys. We're going to watch this with great interest. 
Uh, we're going to have years of content on this channel. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. We'll talk later. Bye.